Good morning, everybody. How are you? Here we are again uh, with beautiful Andalusia. Uh, Julia, can you give us a hand with the technical uh, aspects, please? Absolutely. Hello, everybody. So as always, as you know, you are all muted, so we can't hear or see you. But please do send any questions you can think of throughout the presentation. Just send those through in the question box in your GoToWebinar module. And of course, this will all be recorded. So you'll receive all the information to your inbox tomorrow. Back to you, Virginia. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Thank you, Julia, for the, the help. So we are going to be visiting an area not so visited, not so much visited, very close to my heart. I'll explain you a little later why, uh, which is the Parque de Cazorla, Segura and Las Villas uh, in the inland of the province of uh, beautiful province of Jaén. So again, Southern Europe, happy people, nice weather. Uh, lovely to be outdoors, south of Europe, south of Spain. So here we go, very, very inland, in the mountains, in the valleys, within, still within the biggest olive grove in the world, truly amazing. So we are uh, east of Cordoba and north of Granada, in the very, very heart of Andalusia. So two hours, 15 minutes drive to, to Cordoba, uh, two hours and 15 minutes drive also to Granada and uh, one hour and a half drive to Jaén. It is in Jaén province, it's not so far away, but you are getting in the big mountains, so the, you know, little streets and uh, it gets a little more complicated to, to navigate. Okay, so beautiful Sierra, beautiful mountains. Uh, and again, back into Andalusia, you know, white, Beautiful houses, villages, with amazing stone buildings, castles, churches, palaces that helped the people be indoors while they were maybe attacked by the Arabs during the reconquest of the south of Spain. So I may be showing photos of the upper part of the Sierras of the mountains, but remember the view, the amazing view. We are going to be always going back to that enormous olive grove that Andalusia is. Uh, so you'll be seeing all those little dots all over. So stone buildings, uh, defensive uh, towers. Uh, this was a defensive tower of a castle that at a point when we didn't, didn't need castles any longer was turned into, into a church. So we see bell towers. So through the years, we always convert uh, buildings into things that are of better use. So this is inside of the castle, it has been recovered, but it really shows you a little bit how was life those years inside the castle. So it was not like a huge, sometimes it's like a huge building, but in many occasions it's a, a, a fortress and within they are little houses and patios. So very, very nice, a little alias. And in many occasions uh, that the castle, you know, becomes like a little village within the village. And again, the olive grove. Beautiful area, not so visited, not so many visitors really explore. So you can get here very, very local. And it's dramatic, right? Isn't it impressive? Um, very, very, very nice. And this is the Iruela, uh, little village by Cazorla. Look at that. They build the castles on the top of the hill. So, you know, if there is a cliff, that was a perfect place to have a castle. Remember that uh, this land has, be, has been border with uh, Muslim Spain for many years, the Christians in the north, the Muslims in the south. So we needed to be safe in case we were attacked. And what a better place to, to, to have a place where you can, you know, shelter, a shelter by, by you know, a big wall so nobody could enter. So very defensive, very defensive uh, places. You know, many years after, uh, not really in good shape, but it has been recovered, so you can visit. Uh, it's safe. This is La Iruela. La Iruela I love uh, because, you know, it's this castle, the village. Uh, here on the right-hand side, you see like, a, it's like a huge basilica. Uh, and this is like an amphitheater. 
And what you see at the end, after all that, is the, the valley of the Guadalquivir with all the, the olive grove. Look at that. How impressive is that? So many years ago, it was uh, San John, San, San Jose, San Joseph's Day, uh, March 19th, 99. We were having, spending some days in Baeza with, who now is my business partner, was a good friend, um, his family and some other friends. And we decided on come on a, you know, base cars in here. I was working in Citibank. So I was thinking of maybe leaving the bank, creating a new business. I didn't know what to do. So when I visit this place and the view of the valley and the amphitheater and the basilica with the kids playing soccer, you know, football inside, no ceiling of the basilica and the church and the castle, you know, in ruins. It was so romantic that I, I told one of the persons in the group, why don't you, he's the president of a cultural foundation. So I told him, why don't you create something within your cultural foundation to bring foreigners here? My friends, the Americans, I was working in Citibank then, my friends, the Americans would love this place. So this is how Made for Spain, and now Made for Spain and Portugal began, because I had that idea, but my friend that was the father of my business partner now said, no way, Virginia, you were thinking of something to do. Now you know what to do, just do it. Okay, so here is where Made for Spain and now Made for Spain and Portugal began. So very, very dear to me. And it was a dramatic place, so charming and so authentic Spain and Spanish. This is Quesada, another of the beautiful villages in the in these sierras with the defensive towers. It's very, very magical place. And here we have the Cuevas de Agua, the water caves. Uh, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. You hear the water inside the cave and the, the noise is amazing and the view is fabulous. So really, again, it's like all this natural beauty here for us. The Zabaleta Museum, they have a little bit of a contemporary art here, which is very nice uh, to visit. And it's a, a very good collection of contemporary art, which is, you know, makes a little difference. In, this is a lot about architecture and of the vegan path and hiking and biking and outdoors. So a little culture is always nice. Peal del Becerro, again, the defensive towers all over the castles. We really need it, you know, this to be on the safe side. The olive trees, every time you go a little bit down those mountains, you you get into the olive grove. But again, do you remember when we were speaking about the Cadiz, is the white villages, so the whitewash villages to protect from the from the you know the the, the bacteria from the viruses, uh, painted in white uh, with flowers and flower pots all over. This is very Andalusia, but sometimes you go to northern, to like Morocco, and you know I think we shared that with them. But it's very, very, you know, it makes it very, very nice, very, very beautiful. Hornos, again, fabulous views, and again the olive trees all over the place. It doesn't matter where you look at. Look at this village again, defensive position up the hills, very hard to get into it. So this is how they have to survive. And still they have some uh, very beautiful uh, walls and doors. Uh, this is a Gothic door, you know, uh, within the, the complex, uh, like very, very beautiful. Very off the beaten path. You, again, we were speaking about the Vias Verdes uh, in other sessions before. Uh, so here they also have an a Via Verde that can be walked, which is very nice. Again, the Vias Verdes were the old train ways that have been totally clean and repaired. So you can do hiking, biking, and really enjoy enjoy them because they are not uh, of use as train, uh, you know, for the trains anymore. So very nice. So Valle del Rio, Borosa, La Ferrada de Elias, very, very spectacular. Uh, walk by the water. We have all the private guides to do this really in private. And here you can do, you know, the fishing. The, it's very spectacular. It's really very nice. It's very off the beaten path. This is a little more risky, especially if you see the, <laughs> it's a little more scary seeing the, the animal flying so close back. 
so close by, but really, uh, you know, the clients love it when they want to go to a very unique place. And then we have this, uh, which is very, very unique, is the is the biggest uh, hiking route of Spain, all signed on, you know, all signed, you can walk 478 kilometers without getting lost. It's uh, called the Bosques del Sur. So really very uh, special and very unique. You can really send clients here uh, because it's, it's, it's really very, very cool. And we can choose the best area for them, the best area, depending on the level or what they want to do, if they want to bike or they want to walk or what. So very, very fun. And what is amazing is the villages you are going to be visiting. Is, they are very, very, um, you know, not tourist. It's, it's very authentic. And look at this. I mean, the, 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 the vistas are fabulous. The Pantano del Tranco, this is the, a big uh, water lake done by the human beings. Uh, so very nice on the Sierra del Segura, again, the, the olive trees all over. Look at this tree. How beautiful is this? This is the Sierra Nevada. We'll speak more about uh, this uh, tomorrow, uh, Thursday when we speak about the Alpujarras. But it's magnificent and there it is. Look, it's, you know, the places, you cannot, you cannot believe it. Really, really amazing. Little castles, little valleys, little villages all over. This is in La Iruela, in our place where our company was born. Very magical, very, very magical. Clients love uh, visiting here because of the unexpected uh, loneliness, if you know what I mean, of not really having other people taking photos or visiting. Many more Spanish people go. We can do rafting also in the rivers, hotel ballooning. We do the parapente and the tirolina. This is on top of the lake. It's, it's very fun and my travelers really like it. I'll be scared to death, but uh, it's fun. It is fun. Very amazing, you know, it's like a, like a sea. And again, uh, because it's a sierra and it's very well kept, uh, these natural parks are very well kept. You have all the flora and all the fauna. So this is the, the game you can see calling the female game. We do bird watching, of course. It's a magical place for birds. Um, as we have spoke before, because Spain is in the way between Northern Europe, where the birds go, or many birds go, in summertime to be a little cooler, and Morocco, where they go in wintertime to get a little warm. So you see fantastic animals here. And Iberian lynx, this is, this you can only see in Spain and Portugal, it's Iberian. And we organize here, but also in other places, in Andalusia, um, safaris, is photo safaris to go and look for these beautiful animals. So take photos and we end up with tents and great picnic lunches or dinners. And remember it, all the south of Spain and Portugal, Andalusia, and especially this very place are amazing for looking at the stars. Because in these sierras, as we were saying, there are not many visitors, there are not many villages, there are not many lights. There are not many cars, so it's very, very nice. It's fabulous for, you know, visiting and learning about the, the skies. Very dramatic. This is the water lake again. Very beautiful. I mean, I love it. It's really so amazing. Okay, and Spain, we also produce wine here. It's a little high in the mountains, but we can and we do. I get requests from some of you, like my clients want to visit the wine region. And, you know, we immediately think wine region, which wine region? We produce wine all over. So even up here, we have some happy, you know, entrepreneurs producing good wine. Very good wine. The Escars and Sranquier, of course, we can visit Jaén, which is the capital city of the province. Uh, Uber and Baeza, which are like 45 minutes drive. 
So what do we eat here? We have all these rivers, so we have great trouts. So very well known, this part of Spain because of the trouts and the fish, but also the land. Segureño, because it's from the Sierra of Segura. And they do great stews with the land. And this is very typical, the rim run, they do with olives and the eggs and, you know, some tomato and, you know, it's kind of using similar products, different delicacies that other parts. And in here, what they do is they put a little bit of cod fish. Uh, the cod fish, they used to keep it in salt so they could eat it in winter, in summer, in any season, just by dissolving it. So they include the, to have a little more protein, they include the, the fish. So produce we produce olive oil, olives, fantastic olives and fantastic olive oil. And here's some of the food you can enjoy. Meson Leandro, which we like, or Don Chema. Again, a lot of game, uh, you know, a lot of local produce. And we are a peninsula. We're not an island, but a peninsula, but we are surrounded by water. So even if you go to this mountains, you are going to be seeing in the restaurants great fish, great fish and great seafood on top of the local delicacies. So this is the Parador of the Cazorla, which I like. Uh, it's not a five-star Parador, it's a lower category, it's very basic. It really reminds me the decoration of the Parados when I was a younger girl. Location is fabulous. I mean, you get the amazing views, you get the amazing place where you are. You want to be there. You want to see the stars at night. Great place. But it's not very luxurious. If you know what I mean, what you have, you have the fabulous service of the Paradores, the great food. But to my taste, I think the rooms are a little basic. But still, it's the best uh, accommodation, I would say, in this area. There are some other properties. This is one that I like because of the good spa. And it's newer than the Parador. And then Ocurro here in Cazorla, Sierra. And Sierra de Cazorla Hotel and Spa. And I, I, I really wanted to show you this because we have not spoken so much about the, the flora that can be visited. And I love this little flower, the violet, but it's from Cazorla because it's peculiar from here. So I really wanted to include this photo today, uh, like a little homage to the to these flowers um, that you can only see, you know, on the little mountains, uh, very out of the way. So wide open spaces, outdoor, keeping away from the crowds, uh, traveling with us, and we'll be taking very good care of the clients in Southern Andalusia, where you can be a little away from the crowds, and being on the safe side. So thank you very much. Uh, Julia, I don't know if we have questions today or? We do have a couple of questions and um, please do Thank feel you. free to send in any last minute questions right now. Um, all right, so first up, we've spoken about a few bike experiences. Are we able to do multi-day biking itineraries, biking routes? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, we are. Yes, we are. And all over, not only in Andalusia that we do, uh, but also like in the, you know, outside Barcelona, uh, in many in Castile, in many other places. The key thing is communication again. So the more we know about the travelers, the better we can prepare them, uh, the itinerary, because take into account that the level is not the same for everybody. So we need to adjust where we take clients. So it's nice and easy for them. But yes, we do from half day, a biking tour with an art historian in a city center to have the biking tour in the countryside or you know two three four five days yeah no problem we do customize happy <laughs> wonderful and now on the opposite end of the spectrum um would you recommend this area for clients who aren't really very active but do want a local experience who are not very active you said Right, well, who are not very active. Well, uh, I mean, it could be great to bring them one day here so they visit because it's really beautiful and the nature is amazing. 
But if you are not active, I wouldn't recommend you to stay here like, you know, two, three, four nights because it will be, you know, it's, it's more adequate for, you know, people that really want to get a little more active, active I would say. Uh, it's great for, if you are not active, come for the day to visit and explore. There are a million other places in Andalusia that will, you know, fit much better to, to the taste. Okay. Um, and now a lot of the scenery kind of looks like Game of Thrones. Some of Game of Thrones was filmed in this area, is that right, or in Andalusia? Yes, in Andalusia, yes, in different places. Uh, I have to admit I've never seen Game of Thrones, but I know a good friend of the owner of the, owner of the castle in, uh, in Almodóvar, right? and uh, it's a great Moorish castle, and they do the chapter in it uh, so we can take clients there and visit and enter and meet the owners and you know learn the local you know the little secrets of the filming uh, and also for example in outside of Seville there's a magnificent place Roman ruins of Italica and they have the amphitheater and in there they film the last chapter of Game of Thrones uh, and I know very well because I was there, I went to visit, I was trying to enter and said, no way, they are, they are filming Game of Thrones, like if I knew. <laughs> uh, so that's good. We have filmed uh, in Spain in different places Game of Thrones. Yes. I don't think in this particular place, uh, but we can do a trip on that. <laughs> That'll be fun. Amazing. All right. Now, would you recommend um, going to this area via the Ave to Granada? Does that make sense? Uh, well, you can do Ave to Granada, but then you need to go to... I wouldn't do it. I don't think so. I could uh, go to Cordoba and drive with a car. That would be much better. Or even if you go to, instead of getting to Granada or to Cordoba, continue a little bit after you pass Cordoba. And you go to um, Antequera, sorry, and the, which is halfway. And in there, you know, I think you are closer to it. Uh, again, this is an area of mountains, is high in the mountains, so we don't have the high speed getting there. I think that's part of the magic of not having so many people visiting because it's not so accessible to reach. You have to really to want to go there and go. Uh, but I would go to Antequera. Just send us an email and I'll put it together for you. We'll, we'll work it for you, for travelers. Yep. Okay. And what is the best time of year to go to the Sierra Nevada? Sierra Nevada. We will be, we are speaking about uh, other sierras now. We, Sierra Nevada, we will be speaking uh, on Thursday. It's outside of Granada. And in Sierra Nevada, you can go in winter because you want to ski. And you can go in summer because you want to hike or explore and see the flora, the fauna. Uh, so anytime would be great because I guess the spring and fall is also amazing in the Sierra Nevada. It's very nice. I'll show you more pictures on, on Thursday. Okay. Um, what other area that we've visited would you recommend combining with, with Cazorla? Again, we are up in the mountains, so I would, without hesitating, go to the sea. So any area, because you, you, I think uh, traveling, to me at least, is about the contrast. So to have, uh, you know, being in the high mountain and then being by the water, you know, it really makes the contrast. So any, so very much so all the coasts we've been exploring all outside of Seville, northern Seville, Huelva, all that area, and all the southern coast until Tarifa and Soto Grande which is uh, by Gibraltar, the very, very south. So any of that will go very, very well with the mountains. I think will be fun. So then you have a little bit of the sea and then a little bit of the, of the stars. Great. And how about Portugal? Would it make sense to combine this area with Portugal at all? Mm, it's a little out of the way. It's a little, we can make it happen. Uh, but it's a little bit out of the way, really, uh, because again, you is up in the mountains, you have to, you know, really get in there, you have to drive in there. So you can combine very well with the south of Portugal, uh, you know, maybe like beginning entering in 
Portugal, doing the south of Portugal, going all the way here, leaving uh, the peninsula from Malaga Airport. But I think we'll be much better, we'll be working much better doing it inside the, you know, like a southern Spain or Spain trip because of the not so easy accessibility. And that's part of the charm of it. I think it's beautiful because of that. It's very untouched, it's very authentic. Can we see the map again to understand better yes. where exactly this is? Okay, here we go. This is the distances. You see Cordoba, maybe, maybe you see it better here. Granada, Malaga, Cordoba, Uber and Bayez are here, and Madrid. And here is Portugal. So it's a little farther away. I would say Portugal goes kind of better with maybe Seville, Cordoba, and then going to Madrid, but very well. You can continue here and leave in Spain from Malaga Airport. So it will work very well. So here you see uh, where we are speaking about, Cazorla. So if this is Granada and the Sierra Nevada is here, we were seeing the Sierra from the far distance, while tomorrow, Thursday, when we speak, will be south. So we'll be seeing the Sierra North, the Sierra Nevada. Does this help, Julia? Very much, thank you. And that is it for the plush. Oh wait, sorry, we have a last minute question. Um, can the area be visited on a cruise ship stop in Malaga? Mm, I wouldn't say so. No, not really. It's a long drive. It will take uh, too long, way too long. So I would say no, you're going to be missing the boat. If you see here the coast, it's closer to Almeria, but still it's very long drive. So not really, it's very inland. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. No, not really. Okay, now that was the last question. Um, but we can do a pre or a post. <laughs> very true. Um, all right, well, before I sign off, I just want to remind everyone we have our last session this Thursday, again at six o'clock Madrid time, visiting the Alpujarras, as Virginia said. And that's it for me for today. I will, of course, send you the recording tomorrow along with a pocket guide. And I will leave it with you, Virginia. Well, I just want to thank everybody for being with us today and uh, for the interest. And we'll be looking forward next Thursday. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye-bye.